welcome to Alkaplasm Gaming. My name is Alkaplasm. I know you're wondering, this is not a gaming video, Alex. Why are you uploading a tutorial video? Well, I know this isn't a tutorial channel. However, I, myself, am a video learner. And when I find that I can't find a video on how to do something, I want to help out. So after struggling and looking at pictures and trying to figure out how to do things myself, I will make a tutorial video on it in order to help out others of the community who have the same problem as me. So, I know this is a gaming channel, but in the words of Nathan Fillion... Not my usual, but nice. Now most of you should know what a stepper driver is because you clicked on this video. But for those of you who don't know, or are trying to fix your JG Aurora printer, but aren't sure how to do it, or aren't sure really what a driver is, I'm going to explain it just a little bit. Now, a stepper driver, as far as what I have learned, is what sends voltage to stepper motors. Stepper motors are the things that cause your, your printer to be able to go back and forth, up and down, and have your extruder extrude actual filament. So, depending on the voltage of the drivers that is being sent to these motors, it actually increases or decreases a magnetic field in the motor itself. It's a brushless motor, which means it's being controlled by magnets. And so this field, as the voltage is increased, it spins faster. And we don't want it to go too fast because at that point, because the JG Aurora A5 printer has no internal fans cooling down these motors or the, uh, the drivers themselves, they'll overheat. So we don't want it too high. Now we don't want it too low because the drivers themselves, if they send too little voltage, will not actually be able to get those motors to a point where they are powered correctly. So this can cause under extrusion, it can cause the motor to not even work at all, it can cause clogging, um, and a whole assortment of problems. Now I don't know everything, and I might have said something incorrectly there, and if I have, please tell me in the chat, write something down, let other people know where I've messed up. But now that you know a little bit about what a stepper driver is and what a stepper motor is, let's get to work. Step one, gather your tools. So the first thing you're going to need is a few Allen wrenches. I'm not exactly sure which size you're going to need, but make sure you have the ones that came with your kit and you'll be good. Now you'll also need a small Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, you know, I kind of recommend that you use one with a ceramic um, end if you can, but you don't need one as long as you're careful. This one has a plastic handle and it should be good. Now you're also going to need a multimeter or multimeter. So this one is just a cheap one. You can get a cheap one from Walmart. Uh, an electrical store or you know if you have one awesome and if you don't try to see if one of your friends has one and borrow it okay after that we're good to start working on the machine okay guys so before we actually start doing anything with the printer we want to make sure that we move the z-axis to the top move it up as far as you can there is an extra step here that some people like to take, and that is to remove the filament from the printer before we actually start. You don't have to do this, however, and so I'm not going to, just to show you that it is possible to do these steps without removing the filament from the machine. Okay, so I know you're going to want to start working on the machine right away, but make sure you turn the switch off to turn off your JG Aurora A5 and then unplug the plug to make sure that you're not going to have electricity somehow getting into it. Now we can work on the printer itself. So the first step you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get rid of these back screws here. So you're going to look for the right size Allen wrench and start working on these. Now that you've got your bolts out and I you know, had a hard time with this one. Now that you have them out, make sure that you keep these guys in a safe spot because we'll be needing them again later. Okay guys, so now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to flip your printer on its side. I use a 
board game to prop mine up because it's kind of the perfect size. However, you can use whatever you'd like. So, before we actually take the bolts out here and here in order to actually remove the lid of the chassis, what I recommend doing is to unplug a few things here. That way we don't have to worry about the cords during the actual taking off of the lid. So the first thing you're going to want to do is remove the very bottom piece. After you've, you've removed that, there are two other pieces that are also going to want to come apart. This one right here, which you have to be careful with and wiggle, and this piece up here. So you just use your thumb, and push, up. Okay, now that you have unplugged that, unplugged these two, we can begin to undo the screws here. Now that we have unplugged the cords that are inside, and we've removed the screws here and here and in the back of the machine, it is time to be able to take this part and mostly take it off of the printer. Now this part, you have to be a little bit careful with, and it's a little bit tricky. So first off, remove whatever was balancing your printer. In this case, an, an awesome board game. And then you want to lift the 3D printer back up to normal. Okay, so after you've done this, there's something that I like to do. So first off, the bottom of the lid is actually underneath the printer. So we're going to want to lift it just a little bit and wiggle that out. Now there are still cords attached, so be careful. There are cords at the back of the machine, and that is what I'm trying to avoid doing anything to. So now that we have the cords at the front of the machine taken off, what we're going to do is we're going to be careful. We're going to turn it to the right side of the machine. And actually, first, we are going to unplug. We're going to lean it up like this. And we're going to unplug this cord right here. Now that we've unplugged this cord, we're going to take this and we're going to move it back behind the printer and we're going to lean it on the printer itself. So now that it's leaned on the printer itself and the shelf is hanging on the lid, it's out of the way without hurting it. Now that we're good there, it's on to the next step. Okay, so this is where most of your actual work is going to be done. So before we actually get started, I'm going to explain where your stepper drivers are. So these right here are your stepper drivers. This one, this one, that one, and that one. So before we actually get going, you're going to need to be able to locate what, where each of them are. So what they are is right here on this label. So your first one, if you look and you spin this around, you're going to see that it is the X axis. So this driver here is your X axis. Then your second one, second stepper driver is actually your Y axis. It says Y right there. Then you've got your Z, and then you've actually got your E, or extruder. Um, e. Okay, so if you cannot locate them on there, or for some reason they've been ripped off, or you've done some um, messing around already in here, you can actually see X, Y, Z, and E here. Make sure that your X plug Y, Z, and E are actually plugged into where they should be. Okay? Awesome. Now that that's done, we're going to get to understanding the stepper driver just a little bit. So the first time that I tuned the stepper driver, I did not remove these cords. I actually just weaseled in between. But now that I'm doing this again, I uh, 
I think you can just remove the cords and we're going to do it that way and I'm going to test and see if it works and if it does not work, well then I will probably edit it out of this video. So before we get to talking about what these are, so that I can get a close up, I'm going to remove these cords. So you just have to be careful and make sure that you don't hurt any of the cords. Okay, so before we get started, I'm going to explain this stepper driver a little bit. So, we have a few parts here. We have the front screw here, which is called the V-Ref, or Reference for Voltage, Voltage Reference. So we've got that part right there. This right here is a heat sink for it that keeps it cool. Those are the only two parts we want to worry about on this stepper driver. I don't really understand what the rest of it is, but it's not necessary for what we're going to do. So as we start to work on the voltage in these things, what you're going to do is you're going to turn this clockwise in order to increase the power or the voltage, and you're going to turn it counterclockwise to decrease the power you're going to want a ground for all this tomfoolery and what a ground is is not really actually sure guys but I can tell you that what a ground is is something that causes you to not destroy your motherboard so the black end of a multimeter is your ground and so what you're gonna do is you're going to actually use this right here it is a very good ground and it's close to the board and really easy to use so I'm gonna be using that in this video before we can actually test the voltage of these drivers, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to use our multimeter. So step one is going to be to actually plug them in. So you're going to want to put the black one in ground or com. Now that we've got the black one in com, we need to be careful because this right here is volts and this one right here is amps. We want voltage. We do not want amps. If you use amps, things that are bad can happen. So now we're going to want to use the AC to measure the voltage. So 600 or 200. Now 600, what it does is it measures up to 600 volts. However, that doesn't have the accuracy that we need. Because if, if you see here, if I bring it to here, it only goes down to the one digit. As soon as we do this, we got a point because we're using parts of a volt, not, or, you know, point volts, not one, two, three volts. We're using like 0.65 volts. So you want it on 200 or something else that lets you use these points here. Now comes the time to actually check the voltage. And trust me, it's not super hard. All you have to do is have a steady hand. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to bring in your black, um, your your black side first or your ground and you're going to want to touch that to this metal piece right here then you're going to want to bring in your red one and you're going to want to touch the v-ref right here nothing else do not arc it to anything else on the board just those two as soon as you do that you're going to see a number on your multimeter and i'm going to show you what that would look like right now Okay guys, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually test my first, my x-axis here. So what you're going to do is you're going to put this down on, on your ground, and then you're going to try to, for me I'm going to try to work around this camera, and I'm going to try to get right onto that screw there. And if you look, switch to 0.6. You can't see the point, but there's a point there. So 0.6 is a little bit high for the x axis. You want 0 0.5 to point you want 0 0.4 to 0 0.55 volts running through there. How do I know that? Well, the JG Aurora Wiki website has actual instructions on tuning your stepper driver and it has them all listed there. But I will mention them out right now as well as show you kind of a little cheat sheet that I have right here. So, if you look, I've got x 0.4 to 0.55 y.4 to 0.6, z.7 to 0.85, and then extruder 0.55 to 0.6. So now that we've got all those there, we're going to work on, on parts of this. So my 
driver was a little bit high for the x-axis. So what we're going to do is we're going to wind it down just a little bit by going right onto the screw and twisting it just a little bit. You don't need much in order to affect a pretty... So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually tune each of my stepper drivers and do this in quick time so you guys do not have to see me working forever. And now that you're done tuning the stepper motors, you want to turn the power off again and unplug the plug again. Now this light right over here might still be on for a few seconds. Don't touch anything until that has dimmed down because that means most of the electricity is out of the board. So now what you want to do is you want to take your 4V again. You want to plug it back in to your four, first one. And then you're going to plug these guys back in. Now remember, the name of its plug-in is right there, and you've also got names on these. So this is the Y. And then your extruder. So once that is done, we are good to go to start putting everything back together. So for step one, you're going to want to put the top back down on here. So you're going to do it the same way you did it the first time. Lift up your plate a little bit so you don't get that hurt at all. Bring this back gently, try not to pull cords. Tuck the front end in and bring it back in. So before you get any farther than this, you're going to want to make mm -hmm. sure to plug in the cord that's back here again. Now comes, in my opinion, the hardest part of this process. Now what you want to do is before you put the top of the chassis completely on, you're going to want to be able to reconnect all the cords that you had down below. So what you're going to do is you're going to keep open the chassis just a little bit in order to get these on without stretching the cords too much. So, step one is to take the USB cord and connect it. So that connects on the very back right into the USB port. So now that that's connected on, the next step you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grab the uh, top cord that you unplugged, the one with the glue on it, plug that back in. The next one, and there are two places this could plug in, so this one, got to make sure that you plug in the one right below this cord here. A good idea would be to take a picture of this before you actually start, to make sure that you know where you're plugging it in. So now that those are plugged in, we're all good to put the lid back on. Hey everyone, so now we're in the final steps. Now what we want to do is we want to make it so that the bottom of this screen here slides underneath the chassis. Now that everything is aligned correctly, let's put everything back together. So we're going to put in our screws right here. Okay guys, so next you're going to want to put back on the legs. You want to make sure that you're actually biting into the metal below or else 
you're not going to go anywhere. It's going to screw into the top plate, not the bottom plate, and you won't have it sturdy. When you're screwing these in, make sure you don't tighten it too much because you can warp the metal and you can easily strip these bolts as well. And there you go. Your JG Aurora A5 now has its stepper drivers tuned correctly so that you can get the most out of your prints without getting too many under extrusions. Now all you'll have to do is level your bed and get started.